This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid and you're listening to Serenity streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, the topic today uh, is one after uh, a while of um, not having the show. We've actually been in the process of moving into a new studio. Uh, but alhamdulillah, we are back um, and we are live. And the topic that uh, we are going to be speaking about today uh, is entitled Head Above Water, Facing Challenges Without Getting Overwhelmed. And the reason why I chose this name or this title, Head Above Water, is that a lot of times in life we feel that way exactly that we are trying to keep our head above water and sometimes it feels like uh that the challenges that we face in life uh they tend to <clears throat> sort of take us down and we feel sort of this pull and sometimes it's hard to keep our head above water without uh you know having the the waves of 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 this ocean of challenges uh sort of take us down and 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 cover us and i think that one of the most important things in ter- in terms of facing challenges is has everything to do with the way in which we see challenges and also the way in which we uh, respond to challenges. One thing that I noticed, uh, even in myself and, and just in general, I think the reason why whenever something difficult comes our way or a challenge comes our way, we tend to feel the burden of it. And the reason why we feel that burden is because we think to ourselves, um, I need to deal with this now. I have to figure out a way. I have to carry this. And the I in this statement is the problem uh, because uh, anything that I try to carry by myself or I try to figure out by myself uh, is is not going to be successful. It's going, I'm not going to be able. And the idea here is that instead, when we when we see the challenge come, you know, when the challenge comes our way, instead of thinking about it as it's me against the challenge, what we need to do is we need to immediately shift our focus and instead look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because honestly, the whole reason why these storms come, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this many times in the Quran, that the whole purpose of the storm is to make us turn to Allah for help. And so if we're not doing that, then we're not actually fulfilling the purpose of the challenge itself. The purpose of the challenge is not for me to carry it. It's not for me to try to figure it out, but rather it's for me to turn to the one who can carry it and who can figure it out. And so what we should be doing with these challenges is immediately turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to suffice us and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us and to take care of it. Now, when I say that, uh, a lot of people are then going to think or, or say, but you know, you still have to do your part, your part. And absolutely that is true. But it is extremely important, uh, the way in which we address or the way in which we enter into, um, an issue or we enter into a problem or we enter into a challenge. We do not want to enter by ourselves, but rather we want to enter by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we turn to Allah and this turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be the first thing that we do. And we ask and we seek help from Allah. And this turning and facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something we do with our hearts. And we turn and we ask and we make dua. And once you do that, and once you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and you, and you turn to Him, then you start to act. But while you're acting, your heart is still facing Him. And so your reliance is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while your actions, your limbs are doing, you know, they're acting, but all the time your reliance is on Him and you're looking to Him for the solution. This is extremely important because the problem is when we don't see things in this way, the challenge comes we immediately look at the means. We look at, okay, there's this challenge. Okay, what do I need to do? I need to do A, B, and C. Uh, and, and all of the things that we immediately look at as solutions are means, are things of the dunya, are things which are, which are all just means. And these are not the things that actually bring about 
success or bring about the solution. These are things that we do, yes, but that is not the source of the help. It's not the source of the, of the solution to this problem. So one example would be, uh, you know, you're faced with a, uh, a difficulty or, or perhaps maybe you have, uh, you know, let's, let's just use an, a simple example. You have a headache. Now, the, the first thing that, and in this simple example, usually the first thing we would do if we have a headache is we think, okay, what, um, you know, what medicine should I take? And immediately we go to take the medicine. And, and the idea here is before we, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, we go straight to the medicine. And then in this example, say we take the medicine and the medicine doesn't work. And then now we're wondering, okay, well, the medicine didn't work. And so what's the next thing I can do? Well, let me go to a doctor. So then we go to the doctor and then the doctor checks us out and says, oh no, you have a headache because you have this uh, tumor, for example, something very serious. Now, Okay, the medicine didn't work, going to the doctor didn't work, and now we find out we have this greater problem. Now we think, okay, well, what can we do to treat it? And then the doctor says, well, we can try the surgery. So then we go and we do the surgery. The surgery doesn't work. And then the doctor says, well, we can try this other surgery. So we go ahead and do that surgery, and that doesn't work. And it's only when the doctor finally says there is nothing we can do, there is absolutely nothing we can do, that we then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for help. At this point, we've exhausted every means that we could, and now we turn and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. This needs to be flipped. The problem is that we we go to the means, we go to the help, you know, we go to the, the, the material things, the dunya, for the help before we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only when we've exhausted every other way that we turn to Him. But instead, if we were to turn to Allah from the very beginning, then something very amazing happens. What happens when you turn to Allah from the beginning is that the difficulty itself becomes lightened for you. You know, there's one of the most beautiful du'as of the Prophet wasallam was when Allah, when the Prophet wasallam asked Allah, وَلَا تَكِدْنِي So one of the narrations is يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّومُ بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثُ فَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ وَاصْلِحْ لِي شَأْنِي كُلَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتِ So you begin by, by calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His names. يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّومُ The all-living, the ever-living. يَا قَيُّومُ بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثُ by your mercy, you seek, you're seeking Allah by His mercy and you're seeking His help by His mercy. فَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَةً And this is the part I really want to focus on. You're asking, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dua, do not leave me to myself for the blink of an eye. Do not leave me to myself for the blink of an eye. وَاصْلَحْ لِي شَأْنِ كُلَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنْتِ And rectify all of my affairs. There is no... Nothing worthy of worship except for you. We hear you're asking Allah, do not leave me to myself for the blink of an eye. And this is the problem. When we don't turn to Allah immediately, when we have a challenge or we have a problem, we are actually being, it's, it's like we're leaving, we're, we're being left to ourselves. And that's why it becomes so difficult. That's why the challenge becomes heavy. That's why the difficulty becomes almost unbearable. It's because we're carrying it or rather trying to carry it on our own rather than going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to carry it for us. Inshallah, what I'll do now is I'll take a short break. I'm going to be taking questions. Uh, so go ahead and write your questions, your thoughts, your reflections in the chat box. And when we return, we'll take a look at those. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. 
Uh, so, as I said, you know, we're, today we're speaking about um, dealing with challenges. How do we deal with challenges without getting overwhelmed? And, um, you know, I'm asking, um, Chala, you can go ahead and ask your questions and, and your comments on the chat box. Uh, th- this is a question, you know, the question that we're asking today is how do we deal with life's challenges without getting drowned by them? And it's a question that's relevant to everyone because this life is all about challenges. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in the Quran when he says that, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تبارك الذي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he created death and life in order to test us. Which of us are best in deeds? The idea here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making very clear that the reason why death and life is created is to test us. Which of us are best in deeds? So these tests are part of life. They're a part of dunya. The, the, the question is how do we deal with them and how do we face these challenges without getting overwhelmed by them? And ultimately, uh, the, the reason why and what we spoke about before, the reason why we end up getting overwhelmed really has to do with what we are depending on. When we depend on something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get us through the challenge, whether it's I'm depending on my own self or I'm depending on another person or I'm depending on some means, I'm depending on, um, you know, a certain medicine, a certain doctor, a certain, uh, you know, type of technology, whatever it is, when we put our dependence in something other than Allah, that's why we start to feel overwhelmed. And that's why uh, things become very heavy and things don't really work out. And we have challenge after challenge. Uh, and the challenges themselves are very, very difficult to bear. And so the way that we have to change uh, we have to change the way we are approaching our challenges and immediately see through the challenge and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind it. Everything that comes our way is intended for a reason. And this is also very, very important. If a person believes that things are just haphazard and do not have a purpose, it's going to be very difficult to deal with challenges. But if you see the challenge itself as being given to you specifically at this time in this place, for a very specific purpose, then it's much easier to um, to to be successful and also to benefit. And that's the point. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us can be good for us if we respond in the correct way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only wants good for us. The reason why some things end up being, uh, you know, sometimes end up being bad for us has to do with the way we respond. And so this question of how do we know, um, how do we know if something is good for us or something is bad for us, it, it has everything to do with our response. So when you are faced with a challenge, the, the, the key is immediately see Allah, immediately look through the challenge. Allah is telling you all of this is a test, all of this is a test. But one thing I want to emphasize, sometimes when we're told, you know, we're told since we're young, oh, this life is a test, this life is a test. And so what happens is we, we, we're faced with something and we say, okay, this is a test, this is just a test. But I think our response is still wrong. And this is what I mean. When we're faced with a test like in, in class, so we have a test and we're, um, you know, we're, we're trying to answer the question. Um, and we have really difficult questions. Say we we're, we're on the test and we have a really difficult difficult math problem or a very difficult multiple choice question. What do we do? Well, we we grind our teeth and we, we we just you know we try really hard and we all the pressure is on us to figure it out. Right? That's how we respond to tests in in this life. What would happen if we raised our hand? And we said, um, you know, professor, can you please help me out with this, this problem? Um, that's not really allowed, right? In, in these types of tests, it's, it's not allowed to ask the professor for help because that would be cheating or, you know, um, you know, he's the one who's grading it and you're asking him for help. So that's why I think sometimes in life when we are, you know, when, when we have these tests, uh, given to us, we see it in very much the same way. And we, we treat the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the tests of a human being in a classroom. And it isn't like that. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a test in this life, 
His purpose is for us to ask him for help. The purpose of the test is for us to raise our hand and ask the professor for help. And in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is high above any analogy, the whole purpose is not for you to try to figure it out on your own, for you to try to carry it on your own. The whole purpose is to ask Allah, You alone do we worship and you alone do we seek help. Allah wants us to raise our hand and ask for help. And so I think it's very important that we sort of unlearn a lot of how we... Uh, how we how we think of tests, how we understand them to be, uh, and we need to unlearn it. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not this distant God who's just throwing these tests at you just to watch how you're going to respond with no help. That isn't the point. The point is for you to actually ask Him for help, and He actually the, He wants to carry you. He wants to help you. He wants to make it easy for you, but you just have to go to Him. Our problem as human beings is this idea of depending on other than Allah for help, really. So whether it's self, self, so-called self-reliance or it's reliance on, on other people, this is why we fail. This is why we fall. This is why we are weak. It's because we're trying to rely on ourselves to get through these tests. And that isn't the point. The point is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to, uh, to strengthen us and to help us. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the chat box and take some questions. Uh, one person asks, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers one dua when in a challenge, but not the other one, but not the other, does that mean he loves that person more than the other? So what this person is asking is, suppose there's one person who's in a challenge and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, and then another person who's in a challenge um, asks Allah for, for help, and he help, and he um he answers, and this is in quotation marks, answers one of them and doesn't answer the other. Does that mean that he loves the one he answered more than the other person? Now, the problem here is the way in which we define answering our dua. See, this is, this is again us as human beings. When we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Him for something. So we ask for help, or we ask for khair, we ask for good, we ask for success, we ask for these things. And yet we think in our mind, that there's a particular, um, we want it in a certain form. We want it in a certain way. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give it to us in the exact way that we ask for, in the exact form that we think it should be, we think he hasn't answered our dua. And this is, this is completely wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and answers every dua. But the form in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers, the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, He knows best. He knows better than you or I. So we have to have trust in Allah and in His response. We have to have the best opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah says, أنا عند, أنا عند That I am... I am as my servant thinks of me. We need to know, we need to have the best opinion of Allah, that Allah always answers our dua, and He's taking, He's watching out for us. And we have to have trust that sometimes things, uh, a dua is being answered, but not in the way maybe we think, not in the way that we may be asked or expected. But Allah hears all duas. If we make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, he never turns us away. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help sincerely, He's not going to turn you away. And, and Allah says this in the Quran that, uh, that I answer the call of the caller when he calls on me. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran. And so we shouldn't have lose hope when, when things don't look the way we think they should, but rather have trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And, and we, and realizing too that we might be asking for something in our dua, which is not good for us. Or we might be uh, seeking something or not wanting something, which is good for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, one person asks, how can I overcome ar-riyah? I am afraid that all I do may be for f not for the right reasons. Even when I exercise patience, how can I overcome it? I make dua every day, every salah, but what can I do practically? Uh, you know... <coughs> The idea of riya, and and I mean it's it's somewhat uh, it is definitely a challenge that that we face. Uh, riya means, be, means like showing off in, with regards to uh, worship. So it's it's that you do something for the sake of people saying or people seeing. 
And I think that, you know, we ask, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always for protection from riya, the hidden shirk uh, of, of associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a lesser way because you're doing something that belongs to Allah and you're doing it for someone else or maybe a share of it is for someone else. You know, none of us are perfect. We have to realize that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our intentions. I think that, subhanAllah, again, the answer to all of these challenges, really, the, the, the answer to the problem of riya, the answer to the problem of uh, this difficulty in our life or these tests, the answer to all of these problems is the same thing, and that is turning to Allah. It's facing Allah. It's seeing Allah. You know, we don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our physical eyes, but if we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our hearts, it really solves all of these problems. Now, how would seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solve the problem of riya, for example? Well, if you see Allah, it's like this. Suppose somebody is on their way to meet a king and they want, um, you know, they want something from the king or they want to go impress the king or ask the king for, for, for something. And on their way to meet the king, they run into one of the king's servants. Now, if that person knows and knows there's a king and sees the king and and knows that they're on their way to the king are they going to spend time trying to please the servant or trying to show off for the servant or trying to ask from the servant they aren't the only time they would do that is if they don't see the king if all you saw was the servant and in your mind you thought the servant had some power or or some you know um authority to judge you only then would you waste time trying to show off for the servant or seeking help from the servant so the problem really, when we, when we fall into this something like riya, it's a problem of vision. It's a problem of the heart not seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and instead gets distracted and is instead facing other than Allah, is looking at the servant rather than looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm gonna go ahead inshallah and take another short break. Um, I'll look through the questions and, and go ahead and, and, uh, put your questions in the chat box. Assalamu alaikum, this is Yasmin Mujahid and you're listening to Serenity streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, so there are a lot of questions, alhamdulillah, in the chat box, a lot of really excellent questions. Uh, I'll try to get through as many as I can, um, bi'ithnillah. One of the questions uh, relates to uh, the challenge, and this is this is a very realistic challenge, of wanting to marry someone and your parents don't approve or the other person's parents don't approve. Uh the and this this is one question and I'm at, and I'm going to get to another one as well uh, which is also related to marriage because I want to answer both of them sort of uh, similarly in the same way. Uh, the other question has to do with a person who is having trouble getting married because uh, they had cancer when they were younger and nobody wants to marry them because they had cancer when they were younger. Subhanallah. So uh, again, both of these issues have to do with uh, seeking marriage or seeking something and, and it's not really working out. What I would say, uh, again, both of these issues, these are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are challenges from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like, you know, the, the prophets, peace be upon them, for example, they had tests and they had challenges. And, you know, uh, the father of Yusuf alayhi salam, he lost his son, you know, for a long time. Uh, and we know that Ayyub alayhi salam, lost his health and then he lost his children and lost his wealth and was in, you know, gonna lose his wife. Uh, we know that, um, Yunus alayhi salam was swallowed by, um, the, the fish, uh, and, and, and all of these challenges that these prophets faced. The question we have to ask is how did they, how did they respond? And I think that, you know, the, the, the beauty of the response of the prophets was always back to facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and again, in the challenge itself is some blessing for you if you can just find it. Every challenge, if it's responded to in the correct way, is actually a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't see it that way. 
I mean, usually you think about a challenge, you think about a, a test as being a bad thing. But in fact, that challenge itself and that test itself and that difficulty itself can be a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you respond in the proper way. So let's look at the response of Yunus alayhi salam. His response, and this is actually the dua which we are told to say in times of hardship because of the beauty of this response and how it actually ended up saving him. And he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Yunus when he was trapped, and he was in, you know, when you think about the way that Yunus alayhi salam was trapped, he was trapped like nobody else is trapped inside of the, of the belly of the whale or the fish inside of the ocean. So it's it's like uh, almost like a prison upon a prison upon a prison. And what he says is he turns to Allah first and he says la ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min al Oh Allah, there is no ilah except for you. There is nothing worthy of my ultimate worship, my ultimate love, my ultimate fear. There's no ilah other than you. In La ilaha illa anta subhanak That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high above everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high above your problem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high above this challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high above this You know the feeling of being trapped All of it Allah is higher And then Inni kuntu min al Acknowledging your own deficiency Your own mistakes I was indeed among the wrongdoers This really in this dua Is a recipe to get out of every kind of um, every kind of hardship, every kind of uh, feeling of being trapped, first is to turn to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and to and to look beyond. Really, that's what it is. Yunus Alayhi Salam, he's stuck inside of this this fish, and he's looking beyond. You know, it's looking through the the hardship, looking through the window of your prison, and seeing beyond it, and seeing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because when you do that, there's no prison anymore. When you look and you see through it and you see Allah, there's no prison anymore. There's no hardship anymore if you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you can see through it. And then you look at yourself and you realize your own deficiencies and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify you. If you do this, whether you get married or you don't get married, whether someone wants to marry this sister or doesn't, it, it will be okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you and will give you and will give you and, 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 um, you know, whatever it is that was taken from you or whatever it is that you couldn't have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it with something better. So you never have to despair if you just have the right focus and you turn to Him and you see through it and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to give you what is better. Because everybody and everything is in whose power. These people, the parents who don't agree to the marriage, the, the, the people who don't want to marry the sister, all of these people, all of these circumstances are, are in whose control. Ultimately, everything is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So turn to Him. All of your matters, turn them, to, turn them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the beauty of turning to Allah is kifaya, is sufficiency. Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can suffice you and you can be the happiest person in the world if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffices you. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not suffice you, no matter what you have, no matter how much you have, you will never be content and you will never be happy. So inshallah, I'm going to take um, a couple more questions uh, before we end, inshallah. Someone asked the question about, uh, again, how do you know the difference between, uh, how do you know the difference between a test or a punishment? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, basically, the question here is, uh, how do you know, you know, whatever is, is you are facing of challenges, how do you know if it's good for you or it's bad for you or if it's a, if it's a sign of Allah's pleasure or a sign of Allah's anger or punishment? And the answer to this question that the scholars explain is it has to do with your response. Uh, that, that every single challenge that comes your way, every test that comes your way, it can be a blessing. It can be a gift. It can be something that elevates you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and removes your sins if you respond in the proper way. So really the answer is that we ask Allah to help us, to enable us to respond correctly, to respond in the most beautiful way to the challenges and to the tests so that they can be uh, gifts, so that they can be a means for us to get closer to Allah and to elevate us in this life and in the hereafter. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for that to enable us to, to respond with either sabr, which, which we know is the, 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 the minimum requirement is to respond with patience. And, and if we do that, the Prophet sallallahu says that any hardship, any pain, any calamity, even the prick of a thorn removes sins like leaves falling from a tree. And, and so that's the, you know, that's the minimum that we want as believers. And there's an even higher level than that, and that's ridha. Uh, ridha is contentment, pleasure with the, with the will, with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what it is, there's a sense of contentment internally. And this is the highest level, and we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us that level. And to make it easy for us, uh, that level is the level that elevates the person uh, in, in in their station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of our uh, challenges easy. Uh, the problem is not the challenge itself. The problem is, do we or do we not have the help of Allah? Do we or do we not seek the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because whoever has the assistance and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is difficult. And whoever is left to themselves, Nothing is easy. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه غفور رحيم. سبحانك الله وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.